I'm not sure that I understand what the piranhas are doing, said my sister. They were from a narrow escape earlier that I forgot to mention, said our father. Fortunately, the milk floated at a crucial moment and it all ended for the best. I thought it might, I said. Uh-oh, I said. Prepare to be keelhauled, you scurvy dogs, shouted the pirate. Let us now sacrifice them both to get to great splod, shouted the people with shiny black hair. They stole my eye! Twice! rumbled Mighty Splod. We want those villains and vermins violently vanned up, proclaimed a tall lady, Wumpire, or Vumpire, with long fingernails. The piranha said nothing, but they thrashed about in their bowl ominously. Doomed, moaned Professor Stegg. We cannot escape. They've frozen us in time and depowered us. Even my mighty time machine can do no more than open a small window in time and space, smaller than either of us could get through. But can you do it? I asked. Open a little window in time to our last location? Of course, but what good would that do? Quickly, I said, do it. Professor Stegg pushed the button on the box with the tip of his nose. There was a zoom and a blip, and a window opened in space and time, large enough for an arm to get through. I reached into it. I'll explain later, I said. Fate of the world at stake. I grabbed the milk from me, 15 minutes earlier, through the tiny space-time portal. There he is, grabbing it. You must like milk a lot, said the globby aliens. But that craving for lactic liquids will not make us take pity on you, or let you go, and spare your badly designed planet. It should, I said. What am I holding in my left hand? Er, uh, the milk, they said. And what am I holding in my right hand? They paused. Then one alien, so green and small and so globby and crusted that he might have been an enormous snot bubble blown by an elephant with a terrible head cold, said, The same milk from 15 minutes earlier? Exactly, I said. Now, think about this one very carefully. What would happen if I touched these two things together? The godly aliens went a very pale green. The pirates, shiny black-haired people and the piranhas looked at them, puzzled, seeking some kind of explanation, as did the vampires. If two things that are the same touch, proclaims the volcano god, then the whole universe shall end. Thus saith the great and unutterable splod, how does a volcano know so much about trans-temporal metal science? Asked one of the pale green aliens. Being a geological formation gives you a lot of time to think, said Splod. Also, I subscribe to a number of learned journals. I coughed, in what I hoped was an ominous sort of way. <clears throat> well, I asked. What, he said, admitted the green globby aliens. Oh, sorry. What he said, admitted the green globby aliens. The bit about the universe ending. So, I told them, unless you wish to spend the rest of your lives in a universe that no longer exists, you had better return things to the way they were, and then go away. The aliens looked at each other. They grinned at each other. One of them pressed the Grundledorfer. The vampires, pi pirates, piranhas, volcano god, and the worshippers of the volcano god were gone. What if, suggested one of the green globby aliens, hopefully, we only redecorated the southern hemisphere. Not a chance, I said. Now release us or the milk touches itself and then go away. Leave this planet forever. The aliens looked at me. Ooh. Then they looked at each other and then they sighed with a noise like a hundred elephantine snot balloons all deflating at once. Right, they said. It was at that moment that a voice louder than anything I have ever heard, and I had heard a volcano erupt at a very close range, said, Galactic police, do not move. My hands shook, but the milk did not touch the milk, and the universe did not end. <laughs>